Good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? Good. Okay, first of all, this is an etiquette dinner, but we are going to have fun with this, okay? So relax, all right? Yes, I'm a certified etiquette instructor, but let's vow to have no wrongs tonight, okay? Is that fair? But tomorrow, you guys are all responsible for all this information. Got it? All right. All right, so I have to be careful because I, it, I tend to step away from the microphone. But tonight, um, there's going to be a few things that we're going to talk about. And just dining etiquette is just what it sounds like. It's just etiquette, basically your behaviors when dining. Now, how many of you know the difference between dining and eating? OK, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. OK, say that. I can, I can barely hear you. OK, so rules to dining are really not rules to eating. But what's the difference between dining and what's the difference between dining and eating? OK, so you're being served when you're dining. That's a good one. Good. When you're dining, how, you guys are just, you're, you're sitting here, and what is the first thing that you guys did when you sat down? Yeah? Oh, I put my napkin on my lap. Put your napkin on your lap, but you guys were talking. You were communicating, and that's part of dining, just getting to know the people at your table. And so it's not just about eating, but it's also about getting to know those who are around you, okay, and being gracious to those who are around you, gracious to those who are serving you. So you'll hear me use the word gracious quite a bit tonight. So I just wanted to um, just throw that out there. Um, why is etiquette so important? One of the reasons is because it builds confidence no matter where you go. Whether you are dining tonight with people that, some of the people that you don't know, uh, fine dining uh, with lots of forks, lots of knives, all of those things, or if you're at Fuzzy's Tacos, okay? It doesn't matter. So it gives you some confidence no matter where you are. Also, how many of you judge people? Raise your hands. We all do. Uh-huh. Yeah, raise your hands. OK. We all judge. Not that we're saying anything negative, but it's just in us to make a judgment. First impressions, all right? So people are watching you when you eat, and they're making a judgment, whether or not they're saying, oh, wow, they really know their way around the table, or they might be saying, she might need to go and see Mrs. Diggs. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just kidding. All right, so it also creates a positive impression. When you know what you're doing at the table, people are impressed, all right? And then also it gives you a competitive edge over those of you who might be dining over for an interview. A lot of you might have an interview over a meal, dinner, lunch, a reception of some sort. And it's not just about how you answer the questions, it's also that you're being interviewed because they want to know how you interact with others. Because you'll be potentially interacting with other employers and customers and those sort of people. All right, so tonight's agenda. We're going to talk about before we even eat, there's etiquette before that. So just being a courteous guest, how to take your seat, napkin etiquette, your posture, place settings, uh, the styles of eating. We'll do a little quiz, and then we'll talk about dinner conversation and things to remember. So before we even get started eating, there's etiquette when you get the invitation to a dinner. And you want to make sure that you RSVP by the deadline. Why is that important? Why is RSVP an important? Yes. How many, whether we're going to feed 20 or we're going to feed 120. I mean, it's, we just need to know. We need to make sure that we know how many people that we're feeding. And so the best thing to do, how many of you sometimes forget to RSVP? Yeah. 
But one of the things that you want to do is as soon as you get that invitation, go ahead and RSVP if you think you're going to plan to attend so that they can plan for you. If for some reason something happens and you're not able to keep that commitment, then just immediately let someone know so that they can plan accordingly, all right? Also, put the date on your calendar. Just make it important. Put it in your phone, in your planner, whatever you use to make that important. Inform the host of any dietary restrictions or food allergies, okay? So you don't wanna go somewhere that they've planned for and they decide they're gonna have a lobster feast and you don't eat seafood or you're allergic to seafood. So now you can't eat. They've wasted their money on lobster that you're not eating. So what we wanna make sure that we're doing is if there are any dietary restrictions, let the host know, okay? And then also adhere to the dress code. You guys look beautiful, by the way. And arrive on time because the meal is hot, it's ready for you to dine, and we wanna make sure that you're, those, are, are, those people who have invited you aren't waiting for you and then the food is getting cold and then you're not prepared to eat when planned, all right? So, let's talk about how to take your seat. If everybody can please stand. And what we're going to do, so what it says here is that you're going to enter and exit from the right side of your chair. Now, why, it, who cares? Who, who cares if it's on the right side of the chair? Why, why do you think it matters? What happens if you enter on the left side and you enter on the right side? What's gonna happen? Crash. There's gonna be a crash. There's gonna be a collision. But if everybody shifts to their right, there will be no possible way for a collision, all right? So if you can all just enter on the right-hand side. Okay, now let's talk about a little napkin etiquette. So you heard someone mention up front here that the first thing is to place your napkin on your lap, and that's correct. As soon as you um, have a seat, the next thing that you want to do is to place your napkin on your lap. So I'm going to demonstrate this. I'm gonna to try to do this without knocking anything over. So you're just going to fold your napkin in half. This is a dinner size napkin, and so you're just gonna fold it in half and the fold side is going to go toward your waist, okay? So what we're not going to do is this, okay? So who does this? Who does this? Babies, and you don't want to tuck your, your napkin in your shirt. So if you tuck your napkin in, that is either for little kids or if you're going to go somewhere that, where they're serving lobster or crab and it gets a little messy and you know they tie the, the thing around your neck, that's the only time, okay? So otherwise, we're going to put your napkin against your lap. All right, let's talk about your posture. You're gonna sit up straight, no one's sitting on their foot. Anybody sit on their foot sometime? Just yeah, it's just comfortable sometimes. But in situations like this, where we're talking about etiquette, you wanna just sit up straight, okay? You wanna be about a hand's distance from the table, okay? So about, about a hand's distance away. And you don't want to hover, and you don't wanna to be too far away, so a hand's distance away is, is good, all right? No elbows on the table. You guys have all heard that, learned that. When can you put elbows on the table? Anybody? When? Never. Please, never put your elbows on the table. Okay. So let's talk about your place setting. What do you have in front of you? So you know that there's a little empty spot there for the, the plate in front of you. 
And if you notice, this is kind of like a road map. I hope you guys can see this little cursor here. I can't, hopefully. Okay, so your plate is on the inside here, and then you have the forks on the left, and I'm gonna demonstrate over here on two screens. Forks are on the left, your beverages are on the right. On a round table, sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. Okay, so you, you have beverages on the left and the right, and you're like, which one is mine? So yours are on the right-hand side, okay? All right, and so this is just kind of a roadmap. You work from the outside in. That tells you what is coming, all right? So it tells you that um, your, your first knife can be used for the salad entree, and then the next, uh, the first fork is usually the salad fork, all right? So you're working from the outside in. So the second fork is for your entree, okay? All right, so we can go ahead and get started on the, um, they're gonna serve the salads, but before, while they're serving the salads, I'm gonna talk about two ways of eating, two styles of eating, and that's American and continental. And I'm gonna demonstrate both to you. With the American style of eating, and let's talk about how to hold our utensils. If you put your utensils in your hand and just kind of pivot your hands, and then you're gonna take your pointer fingers to anchor your fork and your knife. Can everyone see what I'm doing here? And so what you're going to do with American style, you're going to cut, and then you're gonna place your knife down. You're not gonna drop it like that. And then you're gonna eat, okay? Let me move this over here a little bit. So you're gonna cut, you're gonna place your knife down, and then you're gonna eat with your dominant hand, okay? With the continental style, You'll start the same way, you cut, but instead of putting your knife down, you eat. You cut and then you eat. You never put the knife down unless you are resting, okay? So there's a resting position for your knife and fork or unless you're leaving for, to leave the meal, okay? So the entire time that you're eating, you continue to hold your utensils. So if you look up here, there's American style of eating and then there's continental. And then we have the resting position for American. If you notice that the knife is just up on the right hand side of the plate. And if you notice, the fork is still in your right hand or your dominant hand and you just place it on your plate just the way that you've had it in your hand. For finished position, it is just at about five o'clock, okay, on your plate. And then this is continental. There's a resting position, and then there is your finished position. Notice again that your resting position, you're eating like this, and then all of a sudden you just rest your utensils down onto your plate in the same way that you were holding them. Does that make sense? And then finish position, again, at five o'clock, tines down on the side of your plate. Any questions about the style of eating? Yes? Can you change if you're left or right-handed? Yes, whatever your dominant hand is, whatever um, hand you are comfortable with eating with, then you can change if you are more comfortable, but typically your dominant hand is the hand that you use your knife with, that you cut with, okay? So how many left-handers are more comfortable cutting with your left hand? Are you more comfortable cutting with your left hand? With the right? Okay, so if that's the case, then you would, it would still be the same. You would cut and then eat, cut and then eat. So if you're eating American style, you cut, and then you're gonna switch, okay? 
Um, unless you're more comfortable, then you can cut and then eat with your left hand. Okay? It just depends on what you're more, most comfortable with. Um, if you're right-handed, you'll cut, you'll lay the, but here's the key. You're putting your knife down if you're, no matter what hand you're using, and then you're eating. When you're doing continental style, you keep the fork. However, you don't do this, you don't switch and eat. You just keep it in the same hand. Okay? Does that make sense? Anybody? Yes? Okay. So in your, on your plate, on your table, you have dressing. So whoever is the closest to the dressing can pick up your dressing. And there's two on your table, right? Okay, so you can serve yourself and then you can pass it toward the right. You never want to reach across to the other person. You want to pass it to the person next to you. Okay, so eat, let's say there's only one dressing. Okay, you want to just pass it around instead of reaching over. And you just pass it around to the right. So your right hand, you're, you're right. So how many of you uh, tried the continental style for the first time tonight? Did anybody try it? Okay, where you cut and then you continue to hold your knife and fork in your hand. Did anybody try continental that has never tried it before? Okay, so I challenge those who have not ever try the continental style of eating to do it when your entree comes out. Okay, and again, we're just cutting and eating. Now, how many pieces of meat or chicken or vegetable do you cut up at one time? One to two bites, okay? You don't wanna cut the whole steak up in many pieces. All right, or the whole chicken breast into mini pieces. Why do you think that is? Why don't you want to cut your whole steak up in mini pieces? Yes. It makes it look messy. Okay, yeah, it does. And guess what happens to the temperature of your food? It gets cold really fast. How many of you have, anybody have young children that you cut the food up for? If you do, it's so that it can cool off faster and so they can eat smaller portions, but it cools the food off faster so your food gets cold really fast if you cut it up, okay? The other thing about the continental style of eating is that this is a helper. It becomes a helper. So it can help those little pieces that kind of, that you've chased around the plate, it kind of helps you get those items onto your fork, all right? So now, is there a preferred way of eating, whether it's American or continental? Some people will say, oh, the, the, the proper way of eating is continental. It is whatever you are most comfortable with, okay? Because I would hate to say that, oh, the best way of eating is continental, and then you don't know how to do it, and then you go to that interview, and it doesn't go so well for you, all right? So one of the things that you want to do is practice, practice, practice. Practice at home when you're eating. Practice when you go out with friends, family, trying that continental style. Try continental style when you're eating rice and peas. That's a challenge. All right? Also, when you're picking up lettuce, lettuce that's not really crisp lettuce, it's a little harder to, to do. All right? So I challenge you, if you've never tried the continental style, to try it tonight. Try it tonight. Again, remember, there's no wrongs tonight. All right? Any questions about the resting, finished position of eating styles? 
All right, we're gonna move right into a quiz real quick. What's the proper way of passing the salt? Now, those of you who have heard me do this, you cannot answer. I'm sorry, can't answer tonight. Let someone else answer. Because I heard some people talking about some of the things that you learned from me. So what's the proper way of passing the salt? If someone says, may I please have the salt? Yes. Okay, pass it to the right. Anybody agree, disagree? All right. You pass it with the pepper. So now, depending on who wants the salt, Okay, you pass it in the direction closest to that person. All right, so whoever is closest to the salt and pepper, you pass them together. Why, do you, why does it matter? Who cares? Whether you pass the salt and pepper together or separate, why does it matter? Yes. Okay, so you could assume that maybe they do need the pepper next. But what happens if the next person says, oh, can I have the pepper? Or can I have the salt and the pepper? Then the salt is over here, the pepper is over there. It causes a lot of confusion at the table. But if they're together, doesn't matter if you want the salt or pepper, they're always together, all right? You don't have to use them both, but they're there if you need them. Make sense? All right, so I wanna talk about something else real quick. When do you season your food? After you taste it. What happens if you start to season by looking at it with your eyes, by, by tasting it with your eyes first? We might assume that it's not seasoned to your liking? And then what happens if you start to overpower it with salt and pepper? You could ruin it because you don't know if it's seasoned or, or to your liking or not. It could be perfectly seasoned, all right? And then if you poured a lot of salt and pepper on it, then you've ruined it. What else does that do? What else does that do to the person who's prepared it? Huh? It insults the chef. It says, I can tell by looking at this, it is not to my liking. So that's, but that's not necessarily the case. So what might it, somebody who is judging you on behavior, what might that tell them? What might they assume? if you immediately start putting seasoning on your food before tasting? What might they assume about your character? Yes? Make assumptions not based on facts. Make assumptions based on, not based on facts, okay? You just jump right in without testing things out, all right? All right, so. That's my little spill on salt and pepper and seasoning. What do you do if you drop your fork on the floor? Five second rule, pick it up, lick it. <laughs> what do you do if you drop it? Kick it under the table. Yes. Get the attention of your server. Why don't you want to pick it up and use it? It's a little gross using, picking up something off the floor, putting it back onto the table. Just let your server know. Now, how many of you know that you're not always going to have a server that's going to be attentive to you? Okay? Tonight, we have perfect servers. They're absolutely wonderful. But how many of you know that this is not an, it's, you're not going to be in an ideal situation every time you dine? You might have to move it out of the way so, so someone doesn't slip on it, and then you may have to get it after the meal, but you don't want to pick it up while you're dining, okay, while you're eating, okay? So you'd leave it and ask uh, for a new one, or you would, if you don't have a server, then you would just wait until 
a better time to get it, which is at the end of the meal, okay? Because you might be at a buffet where you go and get your own utensils, that sort of thing, okay? What should you do with your napkin if you're leaving during the meal? During the meal and you're coming back. Leave it in your chair. Place it on the back of your chair or in your chair, but you never place a soiled or used napkin onto the, on, back onto the table unless you're leaving for good, okay? So unless you're leaving for good. And then let's talk about what you do with your napkin when you are leaving for good. Do you cover everything up? That, make it all neat and pretty? No, doesn't matter. Just place it onto your, um, I'm dropping things up here. Just place it on, you can just lay it on the table, okay? Doesn't have to be folded, doesn't have to be properly, there's nothing to do, just lay it on the table, okay? No rule other than just lay it on the table, okay? All right, this one's always fun. How do you remove a piece of gristle or a pit from an olive? How do you remove that from your mouth? Yes. Put it in your napkin. All right. Everybody agree? Got it. Everybody agree? Anybody have something different? No? Okay. Are you guys going to be surprised by this? The same way that you put it in there. What? The same way? What does that mean? So if you're eating like this, and you have a pit or a seed or a gristle or something that is not appealing, okay? If you put it onto your fork and place it back onto your plate, kind of tucked under something or move over to the side, it's less obvious than, uh-oh, did I, uh-oh, I did something. Oh, there it is. Instead of, this, okay? So it's less obvious because the movement is still the same, all right? Now, everybody do this with your pointer and your thumb. If you have a pit or a seed, you can do this with these two fingers, not your hand, not that. These two fingers, you take it and then you put it onto the side of your, your plate. Okay, any questions about that? Okay. During the meal, where should your smartphone be? Put away. Yes. What is it saying if your smartphone is, well, let me ask you this. In your place setting that you saw up here earlier, was there a space for a smartphone? No. We don't ever want to put your smartphone, your phone, or any of your electronic devices onto your table. And what if you're using your smartphone with the, those that you're dining with? What is that saying to them? What is it saying to them if you're using your phone? Yes? You're more interested in your phone and less interested in what those people that are sitting at your table have to say. Now, what if there's an emergency you're expecting a phone call, then please excuse yourself, take your call, you know, excuse yourself, be brief, and then come on back. Because again, the important thing is you dining with those that are sitting at the table with you, okay? All right, how do you know when it's time to begin eating? When everybody has been served, or if there is a host, when that host begins, okay? Now, one of the things, again, let's talk about not situations that are not ideal, all right? What, have any, has anyone ever gone to a restaurant and everybody was served and then that one person ordered something and it didn't come out with everybody else's? Have you ever had that situation happen? What do you do then? How do you handle that? Yes. Well, 
you could ask them, but what would be better, the person who does not have their meal yet, what would, oh please, go ahead and eat, okay? So if it's you, and you don't have your food and everybody else, then let those eat, let the others eat. Now, what happens if you wait? Your food is cold, and then their food is hot, and you've waited on them, okay? So you offer and you say, oh, please eat. Please go right ahead and eat, all right? Because it does happen, all right? How do you use your soup spoon? Anybody know? Show me that again, somebody. I, I saw some hand movements, okay? So you scoop away from yourself, okay? You don't want to, why don't you want to go this way? You could spill it, splash it on yourself. Why don't you want to blow your soup or <laughs> that causes a lo lot of attention to yourself, brings a lot of attention, unnecessary, all right? You don't want to blow it because it could splatter on somebody, okay? How many of you know where the hottest part of your soup is? Right in the center. So travel on the outside of your on the outside of your soup to get the coolest spot. Okay? So that you're not you're like, well what if it's hot and I want to blow my soup? So the coolest spot is right around the edge of the bowl. What side are your drinking glasses on? The right. What if you forget? Everybody do this real quick. Okay. This is a D for drink. This is a B for bread. If you try to make this beverage, you're going to be messed up. It's bread, drink. Okay? <laughs> bread, drink. Also, how many of you know the car BMW? If you're doing from right to left, bread, meal, water. BMW, all right? Here's another diagram for you if you have any questions. And is it okay to pray at the meal? During your meal? Consider your guests. Would it be okay to pray tonight? Do you know these people? Would you grab their hands and start making them pray with you? That would be odd, yes. So if you don't know the people around you, you don't know their faith, you don't want to be offensive, it's okay to say your own prayer quietly unless it's your family. If it's your family, then you do whatever you guys do as a family, all right? So consider your guests. How do you butter your bread? Do you take it and just start slathering the butter on top? No, one bite at a time. Okay? All right. Some of you have already been served. Help yourselves. I want to go into a little bit of um, just making sure that in your, I kind of walked around, and again, there's no wrongs tonight, but I do want to make sure that you're clear on a couple things on the eating styles. Once you stick, once you choose an eating style, it's important to stick with it, okay? So you can't decide, oh man, I cannot get this chicken, so forget it. I am going to start off, go ahead and finish the way that I know how, all right? So you want to be consistent with your eating style if you're working on continental during your entree or if you're doing American with your entree. So I, I, wanna, I wanna demonstrate this one more time because I've, I've just seen some things that I just wanna make sure that you're clear on. This is good. Not, okay? We don't want to turn because for continental style, we want to keep the tines down. Does that make sense? Down? But for American style, if you want to eat this way, 
then you put your knife down and you eat this way, okay? Does that make sense? So if you're gonna put your knife down and use American style, you don't wanna use American style and do this, all right? So continental style, everybody clear? Not this, continental style, all right? Or American style. Questions about that? All right, someone ask, someone ask about what do you do with your trash when you use your sweeteners? Very good question. You can take your, your packets and you can put it on the side of your, um, if you have, which tonight you guys do, you have a, a cup and saucer for coffee or tea. You can put it on the rim of that plate. Or if you don't have one, because sometimes you won't have one, you can just take it and tuck it onto the side of your plate, okay? And just, you know, just right under the side. You don't need to have some big pile in the middle of the table or anything like that. Just kind of just tuck it up underneath the, the plate. All right? All right. So let's chat a little bit while uh, plates are being picked up. You guys are finished eating and dessert is coming. Let's talk about dinner conversation. You guys have done a great job tonight. But avoid controversial topics. Yes, the elections and all that stuff is coming up. Encourage people to vote, but do not talk about your preferences or what you think or those kinds of things that might become uncomfortable or controversial, okay? Allow others to speak. How many of you are chatty and you know it? Yep, some of you chatty, all right. So if you know you're chatty and you've kind of talked and talked and nobody else has talked, and what's happening if you're doing this? You're not what? Eating. And so everybody else is waiting on dessert and you haven't finished your meal, so the servers are waiting on you. <laughs> okay, we like to have some tiramisu, all right? So anyways, take some cues from your table. If you know that, if you notice that everybody else has eaten and you still have a plate full, then allow someone else to talk so that you can eat, all right? Fair? Refrain from gossip. You don't want to start gossiping about other things in the company or class or about people. You don't want to make people uncomfortable. And then use humor with care. Everything that we find funny is not necessarily funny to everyone. So if you have some good jokes, run them past some friends that will tell you the truth, whether they're good or not so good. All right. So a few things to remember. Be gracious. If you can't remember what fork to use or any of this information that I've given you, just remember to be gracious, okay? Please, thank you, things that we've learned all of our lives, all right? Just be gracious to the servers, be gracious to those who are around you. Also, um, one of the things that if you do forget some things, just take a look kind of of what those around you are doing, all right? Okay. Uh, try a little bit of everything served unless you're allergic to it, okay? You don't wanna, you wanna be gracious even to those who prepare the meal for you. Turn your cell phones off, we talked about that. Put them away, taste before seasoning, and also excuse yourself if you drop something on your clothes or if you feel like you have something in your teeth. You don't wanna sit and grab a sweet and low packet and start working on that that you think that's it, that's kinda of gross. All right, so what you'll wanna do is excuse yourself. Um, if you're wanting to apply lipstick or lip gloss, please do it at in the, excuse yourself to do that as well. All right, some things to avoid. Avoid asking for seconds. In a situation like this, why would you avoid asking for seconds? 
Yes. So remember that RSVP number? They only made enough food for that. And unless they have seconds for everybody, we don't want to have, we don't want to ask for seconds, okay? Now, if you come to my house and I'm hosting something and I've made enough for seconds and I offer seconds, then by all means, please have seconds. So if you are invited somewhere and they offer it, then that's fine. But in a situation like this where you had to RSVP, there's only a certain number, they've not um, allowed for everybody to have seconds, then make sure that you don't ask for seconds. Also, um, if you feel like you're going to be hungry, oh, I'm going to be hungry, oh, that's not going to be enough food, grab a little snack before you come. If you know that you have a bigger appetite than normal, or if you know that this is not going to be enough, let's, you know, you don't want to complain about it. Again, we're dining, not just eating, okay? So keep that in mind. You don't want to complain about the meal. Also, if you are out to eat with colleagues or, or on a potential interview, don't order the most expensive thing on the menu. And if you're not sure what to order, and if someone, if you're on an interview and they've been to that restaurant before, you might say things like, what would you recommend? And if they recommend the ribeye or the lobster, then by all means, have the ribeye and the lobster. But if they recommend the spaghetti, have the spaghetti, <laughs> all right? But however, you just don't want to order the most expensive thing on the, on the menu. Keep that in mind. Go mid-level. You don't have to order the cheapest, but kind of stay in that mid-range. Uh, we talked about picking your teeth. Don't do that at the table. Avoid alcoholic beverages. This is something that you want to think about. Um, some people say, oh, well, what if they order wine for the table? If you are being judged by, if you are being judged on your behavior at that particular meal, like an interview, I would still refrain from ordering a beverage, an alcoholic beverage, or having wine. Uh, one of the things that I remembered um, that was said, I think, the last time that I was here, you know, people go live all the time on uh, Facebook and those things. What if you trip? And it wasn't because you had a beverage, but you just happened to have a beverage in your hand. What's, what's going to happen? They're going to associate that beverage and your, tr your trip with the fact that you might be intoxicated, right? So you don't want to be judged. You don't want anybody to get a misunderstanding of, of your behavior, especially when you're being judged on your behavior. All right? Questions, comments on the alcoholic beverages? All right? So if you're not being judged on your behavior and one, you know, you, you are having a, a social event, then if they're serving beverages, know your limits, okay? You just, again, keep in mind that your behavior matters, okay? All right. Other questions? So your dessert has come out, and there are two utensils on the top of your desserts. And if you notice, they're, they're placed like this. So if you take your spoon and you pull it down here, and you take your fork and you pull it down here, it's in the place where forks and spoons go at the beginning, right? So you just kind of move them down to the side. So you move the fork down to the left and you move the spoon. So with your tiramisu, you might use a spoon. With your cheesecake, you might decide to use a fork whatever your preference is, okay? Both were offered to you tonight. If there's only one, then that's what you use. Sometimes there will only be one, whether it's a fork or if it's a spoon at the top for dessert, okay? What questions do you have for me? 
I appreciate you guys for inviting me and having me. Thank you, Susan, for inviting me. And thank you to the Department of Accounting and everybody. Um, I, I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I will respond to email if you run across some questions. So thank you. Let's give Chiana a round of applause.